Greetings, Unsettled Souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com. Um, I'm just going to zip right into the shows. I've had absolutely no ability to prep for this show the way I wanted to. Because all night long, everything that could possibly go wrong has been, in fact, going wrong. So what I'm going to do is just zip straight into six random stories that are sitting here in my to-do list. Um, the beginning of that, the beginning of this is harder to do than you could ever imagine because I've gotten so many shows within the last a tiny bit of time here that all need to be going up. And every time I look at them, I think, all right, I got to do that one. I got to do that one. I got to do that one. All right, guys. First thing is I'm going to get to. Prison Planet Paul Joseph Watson, a debt default could spark food stamp riots. Here's where I'm at with this. There are a growing number of people that are using the food stamp fiasco. And by that I don't just mean this recent glitch, I mean food stamps in general. They are using it so that they can go ahead and not have to work. Now am I saying that all people on food stamps are lazy people that don't want to work? No, I haven't said that. Has yours truly ever benefited from food stamps? Uh, not personally, but my ex had Crohn's disease, which is an absolute nightmare, and people with such illnesses definitely need your help. Um, she got food stamps, I got it by proxy. Um, fortunately, I've never needed them myself. I do pay into the system, and if I ever needed help from the system, I would use it. Does that mean I'm not libertarian? No, I think there are much better ways to handle such things than by using uh, the federal government. I certainly think that the states and uh, charities together would do a better job than the Fed does by itself. But we work within the system that we have, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to address those people that abuse the system. Those that are perfectly able to work and don't. Yeah, I've got depression issues. I've got stress issues. I've got some kind of excuse that I can't work at the drive-thru at Wendy's. Look. There are a very large number of people who are getting assistance. Who need that assistance. Who could also be working and putting something into society. When I was getting food stamps from my ex, I was working 35, 45 hours a week. I was driving taxi. For Yellow Cab, the greediest taxi company that ever lived, Fred Nero is a bastard. Um, I was doing my best. That's those that are able to, you know, it's stage three cancer, getting chemo in your veins. That's, I'm not talking to you. You should not be working. Talking to a lot of people that know that they could be, in fact, contributing something to the system, and they are not. Those people are the people that I'm about to be addressing in this article. And uh, let's face it, we all know who they are. I, I mean, I'm not even talking about people that make 10 bucks an hour and need food stamps. Hey, they got the best job they had. I know there's not any opportunities for most people in this country. I can see that. I've got no problem with the person I just described getting food stamps. It's these people that got, you know, kids with four or five different people. They don't work. And they've never worked. They just stay home and raise their kids, which consists of feeding them GMOs and making sure that their PlayStation works. Parenting skills are zero as they listen to Rihanna and there's nobody there to tell them the difference between performance art and reality. Fortunately, I, like, uh, my, uh, my uh, dad was smart enough to realize that when he tried to ban heavy metal, that wasn't going to work. So then he started explaining to me what stuff meant and the difference between reality and fiction. Oh no, they don't do that anymore. No, they just play the music for the kid, feed them GMOs, make sure their PlayStation works, and collect their EBT cards. Food stamps, unemployment benefits, and Social Security payments could be delayed for days if the U.S. suffers a debt default. 
and that's an alarming prospect given that ABT cards and the out outage which lasted just hours on Saturday caused many riots and looting in several Walmart stores. Now guys, I, I have no love for Walmart. If you shop at Walmart, I want you to know that I personally, as Sam I beat again, she believes that you are part of the reason you are hurting our nation. I want you to know that. Now that I've made myself clear, Walmart should have locked their doors and sent these animals out the door immediately. Now, I don't mean animals as in poor people, because I have been, and someday likely will, be poor again. Uh, I don't have a lot of money now, but I, I make enough that I wouldn't consider myself poor. Um, but I'm sure it'll happen again. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I, again, I'm talking about lazy leeches. Should the U.S. enter a post-debt ceiling economy on Friday, payments to Medicare and Medicaid providers, unemployment benefits, Social Security checks, and tax refunds would be postponed for one to four days, reports the Washington Post, citing a bipartisan policy center report. This means the food stamps set to be distributed on October 25th would be delayed until at least October 30th, and nearly $60 billion in Social Security checks could be delayed for two weeks. Judging by the reaction to Saturday's EBT card glitch which prompted many riots and looting after just hours, a food stamp freeze lasting four days would threaten even more widespread unrest, he writes. Food stamp style debit cards stopped functioning on Saturday after a routine check by vendor Xerox Corp resulted in a system failure. Although the problem was fixed by the evening, the temporary outage caused a mini riot at a Walmart in Philadelphia, Mississippi, prompting managers to close the store, as they should have. Also, um, I've heard uh, Alex Jones mention this, and I think uh, I was going to say it myself. Um, as soon as I heard this, this sounds like a test. Many people have believed for a long time that we are on the verge of something really horrendous happening. Well, if you predict anything horrendous happening sooner or later, you're going to be right. Uh, having said that, I think it could be very likely that this was a test to see what will happen when said thing occurs. And if that's the case, guys, things are going to get pretty grim. It looks like it might be a good day to buy a gun. Walmart spokesman Kayla Whalen said the financial impact of the mini-riot was still being assessed and that the economy was working with police to identify the culprits. Customers staged the disturbance before walking out with groceries they hadn't paid for, reports the Clarion Ledger. What happened is, taxpayers, myself included, most likely you, are paying for the poor people and the, the disadvantaged to have food, which is fine. There were a certain number of people that knew that the cards were malfunctioning. They were credited sometimes with uh, open accounts, meaning they could take as much as they want. Some people were trying to leave with $700 in food when they had 49 cents on their EBT card, and they knew this. These aren't people that were hungry and wanted food. These were people that we have taken care of for, in some instances, a very long time, and they felt the need to take even more. Uh, the analogy I have is I, I, where I work, they have a $5 all-you-can-eat buffet. Sometimes it's pizza, sometimes it's pasta, garlic bread. It's delicious, absolutely delicious. It's $5. When I DJ there, sometimes people will ask me if I will give them my plate so that they can put food on it because they don't want to pay. I just gave the person the $5. Why? Because we all need to share voluntarily. The Fed doesn't need to come reaching in to make us do it. We all need to share. And uh, obviously some people have this entitlement mindset that even when we give them something, they want even more. Walmart spokesman, uh, I already talked about that, EBT card holders in Louisiana also ransack local Walmart stores in an attempt to exploit temporarily unlimited credit balances. Shelves in Walmart stores in Spring Hill and Mansfield, LA were reportedly cleared Saturday night when the stores allowed purchases on EBT cards even though they were not showing limits, reports KSLA, which again, I'm no fan of Walmart, but that was in fact very kind. The chaos that followed ultimately required intervention from local police and left behind numerous carts filled to overflowing, apparently abandoned when the glitch spurred shopping frenzy ended. 
one woman, animal, attempted to steal $700 worth of groceries despite the fact that she had a balance of just 49 cents on her EBT card. As this small EBT glitch clearly demonstrates, if given half a chance, many EBT cardholders will immediately engage in the mass looting of food and supplies as long as they can get away with it, writes Meg Adams. This was not one or two isolated people. This involved masses of people who spontaneously transformed into a rampaging mob of looting maniacs that ransacked a private business and caused huge losses in stolen goods and displaced inventory. If a relatively minor EBT card glitch that lasted just hours caused looting and mini-riots at several Walmart stores, what will the consequences be for a five-day hold on food stamps? If lawmakers and the White House fail to strike a deal that will temporarily raise the debt ceiling before the end of the week, we're about to find out. Um, and again, this is, this is what you get when you promote the stupid, redneck mentality that I'm, I'm entitled to whatever because I've done raised a bunch of kids, even though they're all by different daddies. This is from the equally stupid uh, hip-hop culture that insists that that I'm going to get mine, I'm going to get mine, no matter what happens, I'm going to get mine. What we have is a nation of stupid white people, stupid black people, and a bunch of stupid people, regardless of what race they are, all out to get theirs, no matter what happens to anybody else. Again, we are not talking about starving people here. We are talking about people that we as a society have made sure eat every day, and they were stealing more. This is a minuscule picture of what we're going to see the first time there's any cutbacks at all. And the problem is that there are a large number of these people who could be working as greeters at Walmart if they were too lazy to chip in a little bit themselves. And again, I'm going to get some idiot that insists that I'm talking about race or that I'm talking about hating poor people. Hey, I was a poor person and I'm not rich enough that I'll ever guarantee that I won't be again. Second of all, I'm one giant. All I gotta do is get fired. I'm back. I'm back at Walmart with everybody else. And uh, then the other one, of course, is that I'm somehow uh, I'm somehow racist because I'm pointing out. I hate when people say that you're racist when you start talking about welfare because you're never racist. You're talking about welfare. They're saying that black people are on welfare and you're picking on black people. No. Actually, for you to say something boneheaded like that proves that you're a racist, not me. I'm saying no matter what color you are, you need to pull your own rate weight. And if we're helping you, don't steal from us. I don't feel any better if a white person steals from me than I do if a black person does. A Korean could still steal from me and I'd be just as offended. Imagine that. Maybe I just don't like being stolen from. Um, guys, Japan asks international community to help solve Fukushima crisis. This is the Telegraph. This is actually really good news. Shinzo Abe, the Prime Minister, confirmed that Japan was open to receiving assistance from overseas in a bid to help resolve the world's worst nuclear crisis in decades. We are wide open to receive the most advanced knowledge from overseas to contain the problem, said Mr. Abe during a speech made in English at the Science Forum in Kyoto. My country needs your knowledge and expertise. Why have you not been asking for this since you took office from the other bonehead that was too stupid to ask for it? Maybe because you wanted to try to hide this to protect the nuclear industry for as long as you could. And maybe, just maybe now it's gotten so bad that you have to ask for help. His comments were made against the backdrop of ongoing technical issues with operators confirming that the latest mishap was an accidental power cut stopping pumps used to inject to cool the damaged reactors. Yeah, they accidentally shut the pumps off. Pumps off. It is so precarious there. The, literally, a worker can accidentally shut off a pump that is used to prevent, I don't know, a meltdown that could easily affect, I don't know, how many people are in Tokyo? Almost said 50 million. I'm not that many. How many people are in Tokyo? Uh, 
Tokyo, by all rights, should already be evacuated. And that's the elephant in the room. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to mention it. We've got a problem here, people. Fukushima is that bad. And as I've been saying, and I'll keep saying it, move from Japan, move from Hawaii, move from Alaska's coast, Oregon's coast, uh, California, and uh, I mean, the, the entire area, up and down to Washington, move! Get out of there! It's deadly! Washington Times, uh, guys, you know what, I can't get to every dunce cap that I'm going to have this month. For those of you that don't know, I run the dunce cap of the month award. Anyway, every month. I have gotten so many stupidities that not only am I going to have the dunce cap of the month, not only am I going to have the runners up like I do every month, look them up, I've done them since January of 13. I've got more dundies than I'm going to be able to get to even then, and so I'm going to have to pepper some of the ones that aren't even runners up. They're not the winner either, clearly. But they're just too stupid to pass up. Uh, Newton, Connecticut, voters accept $50 million to demolish and rebuild the Sandy Hook School. I get that the tragedy happened there. People drive down the road, and unfortunately, the car, something happens, mother, father, and child all die. And it sucks. And my heart goes out to anybody who relates to that story in any way. We don't build a new road because it happened. They are going to build... They're going to tear down Sandy Hook School and build a new school, wasting $50 million. Oh, but it's to remember the poor children. It is to get your money in the pork barrel. We do not build new roads when children die on them. We do not build new homes when children are killed in the home, they usually don't tear the home down. If a child dies in a car, family doesn't always buy a new car. But whenever there's money to be made, listen to these idiots. Rather than build some kind of a shrine to them, not a shrine, that's a bad word, although that's probably what they do. Rather than build a memorial to them, no, let's spend $50 million because we're stupid. Residents of Newton, Connecticut, who wouldn't have had this problem as big as they did if there had been more armed people on the school premises, overwhelmingly voted Saturday to accept $50 million in state money to raise Sandy Hook Elementary School and construct a new one in its place. The unofficial results were 4,504 for the grant offer and 558 against Fox News reported the town plans to begin demolition next month. The school has been shuttered since December 14th, when 20 students and six staff members were shot and killed. Students have been attending classes at the school neighboring Monroe and Hartford Court reported. Why? Voters leaving the polls had mixed thoughts about the cost of the proposal. I feel like the state doesn't have enough money and the federal government doesn't have enough money, Karen Banks told the uh, current. It would be nice to have support to build a school, but I'm still not so sure that they really need a school based on demographics. They don't need a school! Um, when I drove camp for the greedy bastard Fred Nero, um, there was a gentleman shot in the cab, and there were bullet holes in the panel of the car. And guess who had to drive that car for almost six months? Me. Lucky me. Should they have retired the car? Maybe, but that's a lot different. My point being, a school building, of course, costs a lot more than a taxi cab, especially the ones the yellow cab uses. Um, but look, this is a waste of money. And this is one of the people that were almost on my Dunce Cap of the Month award show. But I have even dumber people on the way, believe me. All right, guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K. And when you click on Bud K, you're going to find all kinds of cool things. You're going to find knives, swords, hatchets, zombie survival gear for those of you into the more horror fantasy side of things. Tents. You're going to find everything you could possibly want. Uh, if you got somebody on your list that you just don't know what to get for because they have one of everything, go ahead and check that uh, Bud K. When you do that, though, click on the Media Speaks first and then click on Bud K. 
because that way not only will you get the amazing Bud K merchandise, but you will also be helping Kyle, Port, D. Lake, and myself at the Media Speaks. That's how we grow. So click on Media Speaks first and click on Bud K second. All right, friends, um, three more stories I'm going to do. I'm just grabbing them random here. As I said, the word random, kcci.com, random cars to be selected in traffic checkpoint. Where is the outrage? For all of you people that didn't have any outrage when they mandated car insurance, I was very young at the time, but I remember not thinking of it in the terms of slippery slope. I hadn't learned the term yet. But I remember thinking, this is a bad idea. This is going to lead to a lot of, uh, of government overreach. Even at that age, I knew it. I was very young. I don't think I was 14 or so. Maybe even younger. Well, I've thought the same thing. Why do you have to renew your license? That's double taxation. Well, you need it to check your eyes. Okay, then why can't you just mail in that you had your eyes checked? Why do you got to go in again? A state. Stealing your money. Same thing here. You have a right to not have this done to you in the United States of America. And the only way you're going to get that right back is when enough of you start electing people that already know it and that will stand up for you when they get in office. That is usually libertarians and constitutionalists. It is normally not Republican, Democrat, or Green. West Des Moines, Iowa, the Central Iowa Pacific Safety Task Force, Nazis, is conducting a traffic checkpoint, assess traffic safety checkpoint in Western Polk County Friday. Always for safety and always for the children. <laughs> you got to do it for the children. Authorities said vehicles will be systematically chosen by officers to enter the checkpoint. For example, it may be decided that every fifth vehicle will be directed to a station within the checkpoint. Also, it's legal to violate every fifth person's right. That means if I want to shoot every fifth person that walks down the street, hey, idiots! It wasn't bad. There's not much of it, said uh, Bernard uh, of Slater. Well, that's just wonderful. Authorities said that once stopped, drivers can expect a brief visual verification that turn signals, brake lights, and headlights are functioning properly and that current licensing, registration, and insurance documentation check out, which none of them do they have any right to ask for. How do you beat this? You get 50% of the drivers in any one city to refuse to pay any traffic ticket whatsoever. Not going to renew your license, not going to have any damn insurance. They're going to find you. They're going to take your license away. You just keep on damn driving. And then guess what? They're going to arrest some people. They're going to arrest the problem people. And the rest of you are going to keep on driving because they don't have enough jail space for you and they can't take every cook, teacher, doctor, ditch digger, bricklayer, free made off. They can't take everybody away. It's going to be impossible. So, I mean, come on now. Freemason, that's hilarious. Um, well, they need somebody to keep the Satanism going. He had just, he had just had me turn on my lights, make sure my horn works and all blinkers and everything, said Sharon Bourne of West Orange, otherwise the Nazi would have given her a take. I had a right rear stoplight out and I didn't know about it, said Kermit Beach. Well, you know what? It is time that we get these things stopped. It is time that we tell the government that we're not going to allow you to do this. Tell the states, tell the cities, and then guess what? You don't let them do it anymore. Because as long as we allow this kind of insanity to happen to us, and then that's how long it is going to keep happening to us. I'm going to go to another story on it as I scan through here again. Now I absolutely... Flying by the seat of my pants here. Banthecams.org. What a wonderful name. God bless these people. Florida police jail a man for protesting red light cameras. If you want to vomit just reading the headline. Police in Apopka, Florida, arrested a man on Saturday morning for disturbing a petition that could put the issue of ending red light camera use to public vote. Mark E. Schmidt. Schmidter, S-C-H-M-I-D-T-E-R, a 66-year-old commercial roofing contractor, 
stood on the side of the road, waiting for the light to turn red at the corner of East Main Street and South Park Avenue. Once traffic came to a stop, he would walk in between cars and distribute a double-sided sheet of paper. One side had a petition for form for the residents could fill out <clears throat> and message urging participation in Wednesday's city council meeting. The other side provided information on why cameras should be used, should not be used, and there's a link here. Red light cameras are all about money, not safety, the flyer said in large type. Governments choose tax money over safety motorists. Did I mention, may God bless this man. Officer Ram Robert Campbell watched what was going on and used the public address system on his squad car to order Schmitter to stop. Uh, Schmitter says he's not able to understand what was said out of the loudspeaker. Officer, describe, Officer Campbell described the scene in his arrest report. I'm sure it's honest. As I was approaching him, I read Ban Cam's whole oh, sacrilege on the sign that he was wearing, Officer Campbell wrote. He was holding a large stack of papers. I asked him if he had a permit to protest the red light cameras, and he said no. At this point, Officer Campbell asked for Schmitter's identification. By the way, you do not need a permit to hand out uh, anything, by the way. That, that is a lie. You do not need a permit for it. The officer then asked for his name and date of birth. Schmitter declined to do so unless the officer could show him what law he had violated. Officer Campbell said that he did not have to do that. Sig Heil! Don't ask questions! You are in Nazi Germany! Sig Heil, idiot! Just stand there and put your right arm up like a moron. After asking one more time, he grabbed Schmetter's wrist, handcuffed him, and placed him under arrest, uh, just like the SS used to do. Well, I guess they still do. During the commotion, a man came out of Chuck's Wagon restaurant and identified himself as a former county judge to one of the other officers at the scene. He recognized Schmitter from a previous incident where Schmitter was jailed for handing out flyers on courthouse steps outside a designated free speech zone. That's the last person you want to mess with, the judge warned. Hey, amen. I'm going to keep reading because I love this man. Uh, Schmitter's previous flyer case made it to the state's second highest court, which in December found unconstitutional one of the courts, one of the county court administrative orders under which Smitter had been arrested but upheld the other. The state Supreme Court declined to intervene and Schmitter is considering an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. Hope he does. On Saturday, judges were not the only supporters of Schmitter, according to the police. Other protesters across the street began heckling me for making a bad arrest, Officer Campbell wrote. This information was added to show the demeanor of the group and the arrested male was in. Their demeanor is freedom of speech. Oink, oink. And no, not all pig, not all cops are pigs, but some are oinker. Some are heroes. Eighty percent thought that we were sent from heaven, Schmitter told the newspaper in an interview. They're so frustrated, the other 20 percent weren't even interested. And that's what happens. It tells you what he was fined on here. But the point is, these cameras do not make us safer. Uh, it's been proven in studies that people generally speed up to get through lights or slam on their brakes so they don't get stuck for running it. And that results in more people being rear-ended. It's bad because it takes money off people that really don't have it haven't broken any law except for ill and unjust laws, which we all know are the kind of laws that you should obey in a, in a free society. Look, cameras make us less safe. Don't believe me? Type in speed cameras make us less safe and all the data will come up. I've reported on it a lot. I just gave you one of my sources. EarthSky.org. I'm going to go to end with a little bit of science. I saw this today. I just ran across it. Dated October 14th. Signs of water detected in exoplanets and debris. And this is kind of cool because this is one of the first times, not the first, but it's one of the best finds, I should say. One of the first. That have found both rock and water together. And those are elements, obviously, which uh, life as we know it, 
it depends on. So I'm not saying there's not other forms of life that may, or uh, perhaps already do, uh, live without such things. I'm just saying that for the life that we know, water lands. So listen to this. Using observations obtained with the Hubble Space Telescope and the large telescopes of the W.M. Keck Observatory, researchers found an excess of oxygen, a chemical signature that indicates that the debris had once been part of a bigger body originally composed of 26% water by mass. Very good. Evidence of full water outside our solar system has previously been found in the atmosphere of gas giants. But this is the first time that it has been pinpointed in a rocky body, making it of significant interest, understanding the formation and evolution of habitable planets and life. The dwarf planet Cirrus contains ice buried beneath an outer crust, and researchers have drawn a parallel between the two bodies. It is believed that bodies like Cirrus were the source of the bulk of our own water on Earth. I don't know how, I wish it would have said. In the study published in Science, researchers suggest it is likely that the water detected around the white dwarf GD61 came from a minor planet at least 90 kilometers, which is 56 miles in diameter, but potentially much bigger, that once orbited a planet star before it became a white dwarf. Uh, I'm going to read a little more because it's just that interesting. Uh, like Cirrus, the water was most likely in the form of ice below the planet's surface, from the amount of rocks and water detected in the outer envelope of the White Dwarf, the researchers estimate that the disrupted planetary body had a diameter of at least 90 kilometers. However, because their observations can only detect what is being accreted in recent history, the estimate of its mass is on the conservative side. It is also likely that the object was as large as Vesta, the largest minor planet in the solar system. In its former life, GD61 was a star somewhat bigger than our sun and host to a planetary system. So again, this leads to the fact that there could be, it says, more habitable planets. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of it just because, hey, we're going to end with some science. At this stage in its existence, all that remains of this rocky body is simply dust and debris that has been pulled into the orbit of its dying parent star, says Boris Gonsicki, professor of physics at the University of Warwick. However, this planetary graveyard swirling around the embers of its parent star is a rich source of information about its former life. In these remnants lie chemical clues which point towards a previous existence in a water-rich terrestrial body. These two ingredients, a rocky surface and water, like I said at the beginning, are key in the hunt for habitable planets outside our solar system, so it's very exciting to find them together for the first time outside our solar system. The finding of water in a large asteroid means that the building blocks of habitable planets existed and maybe still exist in the GD61 system, and likely so around a substantial number of other similar parent stars, said lead author J. Uh, I'm so good with foreign names, J. Farihi from the Institute of Astronomy at University of Cambridge. So guys, there you go. They are finding more and more proof that there's likely life in the universe. Now, I want to add some interesting thoughts to this. All right, come down Sam's rabbit hole, if you will. I'm leaning heavily towards believing that the universe is a simulation. I right, look it up. I'm still a Christian. I still believe that God is behind it, but I think that's, that's how it's working. Um, so that would add even more, you know, what, what other things were possibly in this simulation at different times, if that's what it is. Right there is enough information for you to drive yourself crazy trying to research it all until I see you again. Good night, friends. God bless. Sam I.B. reporting for the Media Speaks. The audio for this may very well find itself on Neopa Radio, and that would be great in Canton, Ohio. Um, please donate if you can. The correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give toward me goes towards a better show. Look up the charity connection, Dana Mobley. Chris, we're going to help her beat and continue beating on cancer. And as always, go to the Media Speaks. Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself do a ton of work there. And it would be wonderful to see you coming, enjoying it, leaving comments, and subscribing. Good night, friends. God bless. Adios, my live listening friends.